Mixing bleach and ammonia is, in general, a very bad idea, but under certain circumstances it can be used to make hydroxylamine. And if I wanted to create cheap clickbait, I'd use that as the tagline for this video, and in the thumbnail I'd put text saying, Bleach and ammonia! And have a photo of me pulling a pseudo-surprised expression with my mouth wide open. But I despise all forms of clickbait, so as long as I'm sound of mind and not corrupted by fame, you'll not have to suffer any of that kind of bollocks on this channel. In any case, I can't splice myself into a thumbnail because my photoshopping skills are terrible. So, to clarify, mixing hypochlorite-based bleach and ammonia in an uncontrolled fashion results in the formation of chloramines, and if the hypochlorite is present in a large enough excess, nitrogen trichloride is formed, which is not just poisonous and highly irritating, but also explosive when exposed to UV light. However, if the pH is held at around 9, so some free ammonia is present, but not very much, the hypochlorite is added slowly and steadily, and the temperature is kept as low as practically possible, a solution of monochloramine can be formed in a reliable and reproducible manner. If you then add a hydroxide salt to that solution, it displaces the chloride and results in the formation of hydroxylamine. Hydroxylamine can be separated from ammonia because it's soluble in short-chain alcohols and ammonia isn't, so the next logical step is to find some way of making alcohol emissible with the hydroxylamine solution. The easiest way to do this is with sodium or potassium carbonate, which both do an excellent job of making water emissible with isopropyl alcohol and other alcohols that are more hydrophobic than ethanol. Once extracted, the hydroxylamine can be acidified with hydrochloric acid and isolated as its hydrochloride salt. Before the actual chemistry gets started, I'd like to thank YouTube user Oral Anomaly, formerly Hydrolysis is Fun, for the idea behind this video. It turned out that this is a much quicker, easier, and more easily scalable method than the lab-scale rashing process I demonstrated in an earlier video. The actual method was adapted and scaled up from a 2002 paper by Johnson, Cooper, Mizek and Bartels in the journal Radiation Physics and Chemistry. The method in the original paper was carried out for analytical purposes and was not intended as a preparative method. The reagents used were pH 9 buffer solution, that's 50ml of that, Ammonium chloride, that's 5.35 grams. Calcium hypochlorite, that's 7.2 grams. Sodium carbonate, 25.5 grams in total. Caustic soda, 4.4 grams. Isopropyl alcohol, 3 portions of 20 ml. 37% hydrochloric acid, 19.5 grams. And deionized water. Now the first step is to prepare a fresh solution of sodium hypochlorite. Now, sodium hypochlorite is readily available from any good hardware shop, and some bad ones too, in the form of patio cleaner, but for amateur chemistry there are two major problems with acquiring it this way. Firstly, at the point of purchase, the age of the product is unknown, and because hypochlorite decomposes into chloride over time, the exact concentration has to be determined before use. And secondly, there's a high chance the product contains additives and stabilizers that are not declared on the MSDS, making its purity uncertain. Ran my way, using domestic bleach is simply not an option since it contains surfactants, thickeners, fragrances and other additives that make it completely useless for chemistry and in the last 10 years or so, thin bleach seems to have completely disappeared from supermarket shelves. So, as far as I'm concerned, the best way to use sodium hypochlorite in amateur chemistry is to make a fresh chloride-free solution of known concentration and use it straight away and the following method is one way to do it. In one beaker, calcium hypochlorite was dissolved in 48 ml of water, and in another, 5.3 grams of sodium carbonate was dissolved in 35 ml of water. The carbonate solution was added to the hypochlorite solution, resulting in calcium carbonate precipitating out. The supernatant fluid, a sodium hypochlorite solution with a strength around 10%, was recovered by vacuum filtration and filtered again by gravity, straight into an addition funnel to remove the fine particles. Incidentally, calcium hypochlorite is also available in hardware shops as a disinfectant for swimming pools, but the smallest pack size is about 10 kilos. I'm not rich enough to own or maintain a swimming pool, I'm not that obsessive about hygiene, and I've no desire to make that much hydroxylamine, so hardware scale hypochlorite on the scale is pretty useless to me. Ammonium chloride was weighed into a conical flask with a large headspace to keep any chloramine vapours contained within the, the flask, and pH 9 buffer solution was added. It was placed under the any addition funnel containing the sodium hypochlorite solution. The hypochlorite solution was added slowly and dropwise with stirring. As addition progressed, a lot of gas was evolved in the solution and some white fumes, probably a monochloramine water condensate, developed in the headspace above the reaction. 
The resultant solution, consisting of monochloramine dissolved in water, was left to stir for 15 minutes. No attempt was made to smell it. Caustic soda was dissolved in water, 20 ml, and loaded into the addition funnel. The caustic soda solution was added to the reaction mixture slowly and dropwise. The solution warmed up noticeably and the head of gases above the solution disappeared. Again, the solution was left to serve for 15 minutes. After caustic soda addition was complete, the rest of the sodium carbonate was added and mixed until dissolved. The mixture was then extracted with isopropyl alcohol with some difficulty as the solution became supersaturated with carbonate, which precipitated out. In retrospect, maybe potassium carbonate would, could have worked better. Concentrated hydrochloric acid was added to the alcohol extracts, causing hydroxylamine hydrochloride to form as smoke in the headspace above the liquid. This dissolved with further additions of acid and quite a lot of shaking. Most of the solvent was removed by distillation. Once the alcohol had been removed, the mixture was cooled to ambient temperature and the distillation was continued under vacuum until the product precipitated out as wet solids on the side of the flask. The product was rinsed out with acetone and a little hydrochloric acid and dried on the pump to yield a slightly yellow, fluffy, odorless solid with a net weight of 2.1 grams, representing a yield of 30% with respect to ammonium chloride. Over the course of a day or two, the yellow colour faded to white. Although the actual quantity recovered was pretty poor, this was a definite improvement on my initial attempt, which resulted in a 25% of some much less pure product that turned purple and started smelling strongly, most likely due to using a lower quality grade of calcium hypochlorite. There are several likely causes for the poor yield, which I intend to address the next time I try carrying out this reaction. The first is that the intermediate, monochloramine, is a chemically unstable gas, and by not actively minimising the reaction temperature in process, a significant amount of it could have been lost to decomposition. Running it in an ice bath would likely improve matters. The second is that potassium carbonate does a better job of separating water and alcohols than sodium carbonate does, so the use of sodium carbonate could well have caused a loss of efficiency in the IPA water extraction steps. The third is that the losses of monochloramine could have been made worse by the fact that hypochlorate and hydroxide were added one after another instead of both at the same time. There's no reason why they couldn't be added simultaneously, and in fact hypochlorite solutions are stabilised by high alkalinity. All in all, this method is still very much a work in progress, and it has a lot of room for improvement, but the principle behind it appears to be fundamentally sound. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.